What is waterfall methodology? Hi there, my name is Josh Vector. I'm one of the founders of Product Manager HQ. I'm also head of product and founder of a software company called Squibbler. And in today's video, I'd like to discuss an age old traditional approach used by businesses to work on different projects, none other than the waterfall methodology. We'll go ahead and break down what the methodology entails, explore how different it is from other methodologies and frameworks, and also examine the main advantages and drawbacks associated with this kind of approach. But first, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you can get updated whenever we come out with new product management videos that are insightful and come from real product management experts. Let's dive right into the discussion. So what is the waterfall methodology? For starters, the waterfall methodology is one which is heavily associated with project management as opposed to product management. The waterfall model emphasizes that projects should follow a logical progression of steps throughout the software development lifecycle, or SDLC. And just like the name implies, each phase of the project cascades into the next, progressively flowing down like a waterfall. Waterfall projects can be broken down into several distinct phases. This is an ordered set of phases and each phase needs to be completed one by one. Phase two cannot be started until the previous phase has been completed and so on and so forth. Traditionally, project managers have always been associated with the waterfall approach. A project manager operates in a structured environment following a scientific approach. They use the basic management practices for project completion. As a result, they tend to be a lot less flexible in their approach to projects following the waterfall methodology and its linear consequential approach in lieu of other frameworks. In total, there are six steps of the waterfall model. The first one is gathering requirements. During this first phase, the potential requirements of the product are methodically collected and written down in a specification document. With this requirements document, project managers plan out every other phase without further customer correspondence until the product is complete. It is assumed that all the requirement gathering happens at this phase. And in this phase, the requirements are gathered by the business analyst and they're analyzed. The second step is the analysis. With a compilation of ideas that define what the application should do, it's important to now transform them into an actionable plan. During the second stage, you should properly generate the models and business logic that will be used in the application. And in the third stage, you convert business needs into tech requirements. And in this phase, design specifications need to be created to outline how exactly the business needs covered in the requirement document will be implemented from a technical point of view. This design process covers technical design requirements such as programming language, data layers, services, and more. The fourth stage is development. This is the implementation phase when the actual source code is finally written. Implementing all models, business requirements, and integrations that were specified in the prior stages. The fifth phase is testing or validation. In this testing phase, QA and beta testers systematically locate and report problems within the application. From this stage, the project often goes back to the previous stage, sometimes even goes back to the design phase where the code is rewritten in order to ensure the bugs are fixed. In this case, the project needs to go through testing again until it is cleared by testers. Once a product has been tested, then you move on to the sixth and final stage in the waterfall approach, which is the product launch. At this stage, the application is ready for deployment to a live environment where users can access it and get back to you with more feedback. It's key that customers review the product to make sure that it meets the requirements laid out at the beginning of the project. After the product release, it's important to maintain subsequent support on the product to keep it functional and up to date. And in order to get an even better grasp of the waterfall methodology, we've decided to break down how it is different from another popular approach to project management, which is Scrum. Scrum is a goal-oriented methodology used in development that seeks to leverage iterative and incremental practices to help manage highly complex products. Scrum is one of the main branches or subsets of the Agile methodology, a broader framework applied to development that emphasizes iterative periodic analysis and adaptation for product improvement. Apart from being an iterative approach to product management, 
Agile is also recognized for the focus it places on three aspects of product projects. You have one, a leadership framework that inspires teamwork while still respecting the importance of self-organization and individual contributions to projects. And then we have two, an approach to product creation that speeds up the design, development, and implementation process without compromising quality. And then we have three, a business focus that seeks to bridge the gap between company goals and customer needs. The main difference between them is that waterfall projects are completed sequentially while agile projects are completed iteratively in a cycle. Waterfall projects can be broken down into several distinct areas where there is an order set of phases. On the other hand, agile projects are based on small phases that can happen simultaneously involving various team members. These individual deliverable pieces are called sprints and last just a few weeks. Once each sprint is completed, the feedback is used to plan the next phase. With both Scrum and Waterfall methodology being such fundamental pillars of project and product management, whenever companies start new projects, they face the decision of choosing which development methodology to use. Both methods of development projects are widely used but have completely different approaches to the product development lifecycle. Both processes also have advantages and work better for different types of projects. Let's go ahead and take a look at the advantages of leveraging the waterfall methodology in your approach to product development. The waterfall method requires meticulous documentation, something which implies that it lays the groundwork for easier organization and retrieval of information in the future. In addition, if anyone suddenly leaves the development team, the strong documentation will allow someone else to pick it up quickly, which minimizes the impact on product deadlines. Both the development team and customers spend time early in the life cycle agreeing on what will be delivered, which allows everyone to have a better idea of what to expect in terms of size, cost, and the timeline for the product. Since the design aspect is completed fairly early on, software engineering can work on multiple components in parallel. As a result, there is tangible output at the end of every single stage, which means that all stakeholders can feel more comfortable seeing progress being made. The waterfall methodology does not come without its drawbacks. The process of gathering requirements from customers is a really tough process from the get-go because customers may not necessarily have a good sense of the final product, even if you give them wireframes and mockups. Because of this, there is a good chance that the customers will be unhappy with the final product since they can't see what is being delivered until it is almost finished. The waterfall plan doesn't take into account users' evolving needs, so if the team discovers that the user demands different changes later in the process, it's very difficult to go back and especially all the way to the beginning. Feedback and testing are deferred until very late in the development cycle, so bugs can severely impact how code was written if discovered late. And to close off here, deciding whether the waterfall methodology is best for your specific project is a tough one. If you have a clear picture of what the final product will be, and you know that your users won't have changing needs once a project has begun, then maybe this is the best choice for you. In any case, this video has given you a clear sense of what this methodology entails and how it stacks up against different approaches under the Scrum framework. If you'd like to know more about the field, we at Product Manager HQ offer certification courses to help you level up your product management understanding when it comes to different approaches, whether it be waterfall methodology or agile methodology. And before I go, I have a quick question for you, which is why do you think companies have shifted from the waterfall methodology to other types of project management approaches? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe to our channel and like our video, and that way you can keep up to date with everything product management. And again, my name is Josh from Product Manager HQ, and I wish you the best in your career journey, whether you be in project management or product management, and I'll see you on some of our following videos. Cheers.